If you thought that 2016 was a terrible year, the new year shows many signs that the much speculated Nemesis Nibiru system is set to arrive. Moving ever closer to our planet as it moves around the Sun in its elongated elliptical orbit across our solar system. There are new images that indicate that Nibiru is a large blue planet and is one of several orbiting bodies that are now moving through our solar system. These images of the planet, which the Hopi elders refer to as the Blue Kachina, provide a brief glimpse into the approaching star system, which is often very difficult to spot due to the steep angle in which it is moving. As it intertwines and approaches, it will come from the south, where its appearance will first be noticed. Thereafter, it will make an extreme loop to the north before coming back to the south as it makes its exit from our orbital path. The sense of its approach is overwhelming. The tremendous influx of seismic activity across the Ring of Fire in such places as New Zealand, Chile, and Japan is with great certainty associated with the approaching star system and its gravitational pull on the Earth. Earthquakes have increased with great intensity both in numbers and in magnitude. As a prime example of the increase in activity, the number of noticeable earthquakes that struck Japan in 2016 exceeded 6,500, which is three times more than was registered in 2015. And it is no coincidence that the numbers continue to increase. In December of 2016, the number of active or erupting volcanoes around the world had increased dramatically to over 50. And the numbers continued to be strong going into the first week of the new year. Storm systems are multiplying both in the intensity and the size. Check out this incredible footage captured on December 24th from Lake Titicaca in Bolivia. Onlookers were startled as they watched an approaching electromagnetic storm that quickly developed into a massive water spout over the lake. Credible footage captured on December 24th from Lake Titicaca in Bolivia. Onlookers were startled as they watched an approaching electromagnetic storm that quickly developed into a massive water spout over the lake. With the increase in the type and intensity of each storm comes an unusually high increase in the numbers of sinkholes and cracks appearing in the Earth's crust. As the weather continues to become more extreme, it brings with it the continuation of stronger with the increase and longer in heat the waves, and which in turn lead to more severe wildfires across the world. Eventually, all of these factors will build to a point where life on Earth will become almost unbearable, reaching a point 
in which there can be no return to normalcy. We live in a culture where everyone wants the bottom line up front, regardless of the nature of the event. But in order to accurately evaluate and review the latest earthly events and how they relate to celestial observations, we first have to cipher through the thousands of text messages and social media comments that are often confusing, bewildering, or otherwise provide a false sense of reality. Because words are often overlooked or ignored, the messenger must thread a fine line that separates the scientific from the religious interpretation of the message. So what exactly is the bottom line in our discussion? What is it that so many seem to be missing, or just don't have the time or the desire to openly discuss with friends or family members? Can we or should we separate science from religion? in an effort to seek the truth? Certainly we all seek answers to the great mysteries that have unfolded over time, but finding the answers are a bit tricky. Yet in all of our confusion there is a way forward that may provide a clear understanding of what I have been talking about. When we think of the apocalypse, many of us consider this as a time in which a sudden or great disaster will sweep across the earth. But if for a moment we were to interact science with religion, it is feasible that we could describe this event as the interaction of the Nibiru Nemesis system, which is comprised of seven orbiting planets and moons, with the visible solar system comprised of eight orbiting planets and our own sun. Is this what the book of Revelation gave reference to in its description of latter-day events? I suggest that you take the time to read this book, as it could and probably does explain the end times in great detail. Most of us know or have heard of this. It represents the four evils that will come upon the earth in the latter days in the form of pestilence, famine, war, and death. All very real events that have in one form or another plagued the earth for generations. What if the four horsemen actually represent the four main bodies in the Planet X system? The tribulation starts shortly after those bodies align in orbit on the four sides of the earth. They are stars that we will be able to see after the sign in heaven is given, which would be the approach of the comet, a great event that would shake the earth. So now I ask, is the picture beginning to come into focus? The governments of the world try to suppress the truth about these celestial events by making it look as if a great war had begun between nations. But the truth will eventually be known, which has nothing to do with a world war. If an event of such magnitude were to occur, humanity would be inclined to seek shelter in any place that would guarantee their survival, until which time they can emerge from their hiding places and begin anew. Yes, this is all spoken of within the book of Revelation. Its meaning is understood by those who follow its teachings. But it may all sound like conjecture to those who do not believe in the interaction of science and religion. But if you put all of what I just said into perspective, it could help you in your quest for truth. Maybe it will provide a clear picture of what is happening and why it is happening. So here is the bottom line when it comes to gathering all of the information that is at our disposal about the great events now transpiring on earth and what it means for each of us. The end times as mentioned in prophecy in the book of Revelations and in the spoken word is not the end of planet earth or the end of all civilization. 
it is only the end of the world as we know it. In other words, it is out with the old and in with the new. It is the blending of the science of religion with the science of the universe. A time of reawakening with one's spiritual self. As with everything in life, there is a beginning and there is an end. But it is and will continue to be a matter of individual interpretation, until which time all things will become clearer and more understood.